His theory of 1912 would open the doors to crystallography, and his Nobel Medal during World War II has an amazing story to tell. Here are 10 facts about one of the original quantum forerunners, Max von Lau. 1. Births and Early Life On October 9, 1879, Max Theodore Felix Lau was born in the town of Pfaffendorf near Koblenz within the German Empire. His father was a part of the military and was stationed in various cities, so Max found himself traveling, often in his younger days, moving to such places as Brandenburg, Posen, Berlin, and Strasbourg. After a year of military service in 1898, Max would go to the universities of Strasbourg, Göttingen, and briefly Munich, developing a love for math and the sciences along the way. 2. Max Planck Von Lau had the privilege of working under physicist Max Planck in Berlin during his early years when he was about 23 years of age in 1902. This was only two short years after Planck's discovery of quantization in 1900. Although upon arriving in Berlin, Lau was unaware of this discovery of Planck's. Lau would graduate from Berlin in 1903 and would spend two years in Göttingen, yet would return to Berlin as Planck's assistant in 1905. It was during this time that Planck and von Lau would become closer on both a professional and personal basis. 3. Proponent of Relativity While Lau was in Berlin under Planck, Einstein released his famous paper on special relativity in 1905. Lau recalls the first time meeting the unassuming Einstein at the patent office in Bern, Switzerland, one year later in 1906, saying, As agreed by letter, I went to see him at the Office of Intellectual Property. In the general reception room, an official told me to go back into the corridor. Einstein would find me there. I did so, but the impression that the young man who approached me was so unexpected that I didn't believe this could be the father of relativity theory. So I let him pass by, and it was not until he returned from the reception room that we made each other's acquaintance. Lau would have a great interest and be a strong proponent of what was at the time the controversial special theory of relativity. In 1907, Lau would show how Armand Hippolyte Fizeau's famous 1851 light and water experiment was indeed consistent with and confirmed special relativity. Lau would write the first volume of his book on relativity in 1910, followed by the second volume in 1921. Lau and Einstein would remain friends for the decades to come. 4. X-ray diffraction in crystals In 1912, Max von Lau formulated his groundbreaking theory for what he would become most famous for on X-ray crystal diffraction. He proposed that when X-rays discovered 17 years earlier by Röntgen passed through a crystal, they would diffract, producing a unique pattern that could unveil the crystal's internal structure. It would be Walter Friedrich and Paul Nipping who would conduct the crucial experiment to test this theory. In the same year, using crystals of copper sulfate, pentahydrate, and zinc sulfide, they confirmed von Lau's predictions by observing diffraction patterns on a photographic plate. This experimental validation not only substantiated von Lau's theory, but also laid the foundation for the development of X-ray crystallography, revolutionizing our understanding of atomic and molecular structures in crystals. For his discovery of diffraction of X-rays by crystals, would bring von Lau a Nobel Medal in 1914, and this medal would have a story of its own to tell some 30 years later. 5. Superconductivity Von Lau played a significant role in the early days of superconductivity during his tenure as professor of theoretical physics at Berlin University. His work, particularly in collaboration with the London brothers, Fritz and Heinz, addressed the phenomenon of ohmic resistance, disappearance in metals, near the temperature of liquid helium. In 1932, he provided a crucial explanation for the variation in the magnetic field threshold that disrupts superconductivity, attributing it to the shape of the body and the deformation of the magnetic field by induced supercurrents. This explanation laid the groundwork for Walter Meissner's subsequent discovery that a superconductor eliminates the entire magnetic field within its interior forming the basis for the London Brothers' theory of superconductivity. Von Lau continued his contributions with 12 papers and a book on superconductivity both before and after World War II. 6. Nobel Dissolved 
This is a pretty interesting little fact and a piece of curious history. In the midst of the Nazi government coming to power in World War II, von Lau and James Franck, who won his Nobel in 1925 for the ionization of atoms by electron bombardment, both sent their Nobel gold medals to Niels Bohr Institute in Denmark for safekeeping. However, this became a problem when in 1940, Denmark fell under Nazi occupation and it was a capital offense to send gold out of Germany. George de Hebesy, a Hungarian chemist working at Niels Bohr Institute, recounts the events, saying, I suggested that we bury the metal, but Bohr did not like this idea as the metal might be unearthed. I decided to dissolve it. While the invading forces marched in the streets of Copenhagen, I was busy dissolving Laos and also James Frank's medal. After the war, the gold was recovered, and the Nobel Foundation generously presented Lau and Frank with new Nobel Prize medals. Metals were dissolved in a solution of aqua regia, also known as nitrohydrochloric acid. After the war, the Hebesy recovered the solution, finding it undisturbed, and precipitated the gold from the acid and sent it to Stockholm to be recast and the new metals rejoined Frank and von Lau in 1952. 7. Opposition to Nazism Von Lau was known for his principles and strong stand against the anti-Semitic policies of the Nazis. In an opening speech for the German Physical Society in 1933, Von Lau compared the current government policies and Einstein's quote-unquote Jewish physics and relativity to the persecution of Galileo and the heliocentric view of Copernicus, which led to his dismissal from his position as director of the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute of Physics. In the same year, 1933, Von Lau successfully blocked Johannes Stark's regular membership in the Prussian Academy of the Sciences. Von Lau continued to voice his opposition to the regime and was proactive in secretly helping colleagues that were persecuted to emigrate out of Germany. Despite facing difficulties and restrictions, Von Lau maintained his stance against the Nazis throughout the era. It is even said that Von Lau would often make sure to be carrying packages when leaving his house so as to not have to partake in the Nazi salute. 8. Farm Hall Von Lau was one of 10 German scientists detained in Farm Hall, England at the end of World War II, most of whom were connected with the Nazi nuclear program. For their six-month detainment, their conversations were recorded without them knowing. Although, among the available transcripts, there are few quotes from Von Lau, and he seems to have felt as a bit of an outlier of the 10 as expressed in this letter to his son, Theo. Everyone but me collaborated on the uranium machine, and that's probably why we were detained. I seem to have been taken along by mistake. Or do they suspect me of some particularly deep secret, since they know nothing at all about my relevant activities? Both Lau and also Otto Hahn seem to have been given a different status to the other detainees as while they were headed to Farm Hall from France, they were allowed to visit under guard, various locations such as the cathedral in Reims and the palace in Versailles. 9. Post-War Rebuilding The now 66-year-old von Lau played a crucial role in rebuilding German physics after the war. Germany's scientific community faced significant challenges with many institutions and laboratories in disarray. Von Lau actively engaged in restoring scientific collaboration and infrastructure. In April 1951, von Lau took on the role of director at the Max Planck Institute for Physical Chemistry and Electrochemistry, a position he would hold until 1959. In 1953, at von Lau's request, the institute was renamed the Fritz Haber Institute for Physical Chemistry and Electrochemistry of the Max Planck Society. His leadership and dedication contributed significantly to the revitalization of German physics during that post-war period. 10. Death and Legacy Max von Lau passed away on April 24, 1960 at the age of 80 years old due to his injuries impacted from a car accident 16 days earlier. Von Lau's breakthrough in crystal diffraction would eventually help lead to the discovery of the structure of deoxyribonucleic acid some 40 years after his theory's inception. Von Lau demonstrated that one could have a positive impact within a politically challenging regime exemplified by his stance against Hitler's Germany. 
His resistance to Nazi control in the scientific realm granted him more flexibility than his peers to continue his work post-World War II. Max von Lau will be remembered as one of the key pioneers of the many breakthroughs which took place in those dynamic years of the early 20th century. We thank you for watching. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to like and subscribe for more interesting facts about our world and those which are within it.